Mr. X with our third ever garage unboxing. Why was it a garage unboxing and what were the first two? Well, first one I ever did was Magneto vs. Sentinel prototype because it came in two large wooden crates. Second one was the HCG Hollywood Collectible Group Ali Queen Alien on Wall. I have reviews of both of those, go check it out. This was the hardest garage unboxing I've ever done though. I did it in the garage because not only was it massive, you'll see pictures in a second, but it's arguably one of the heaviest statues I have. That's the other reason we have it right here in the middle of the table. I don't want the whole table to flip up. And uh, thankfully he's gonna be displayed where I can support him. So let's find out more. Mr. X with the Extreme Channel, and you are probably wondering, what is this? I'll tell you what it is. It's a Carcaridon Carcarius. It's a great white. What we are dealing with here is a perfect engine, uh, an eating machine. It's really a miracle of evolution. All this machine does is swim and eat. So this is a quarter scale, great white shark by Infinity Studios. Infinity Studios is relatively new to the statue game and they came out with uh, quite a few pieces in the last few months and they have a lot more on their docket. They're the ones with all those life-size busts like the Wonder Woman, here's a picture of that. Then the Henry Cavill, here's another picture. And this is actually my second piece by Infinity Studios. My first one was also an animal piece. It was the uh, Pilgrimage, the Dragon. Check this out. And if you watch that review, you know I was slightly disappointed. There were some really good things and then some, uh, some things that I just disagreed with. This statue follows that same pattern. I purchased this because I'm a huge Jaws fan. I think the music in Jaws is amazing. I think uh, Roy Schneider, Richard Dreyfuss, one of the greatest actors. Uh, it's just a fantastic movie, Jaws 1 specifically. It's one of those movies I could watch over and over again especially listening to the music. Some of you got that. And while this isn't Jaws, because I'm sure they would have had to pay more, it's a great white shark that is humongous. So that's good enough for me. So he's gonna go with my horror and movie pieces. Fits perfectly, at least in my opinion. I purchased him from Spec Fiction. I purchased all my Infinity pieces from Spec Fiction. The customer service is great, the shipping is great. Uh, Todd just does an awesome, awesome job. So I highly recommend them. And he did not give me a discount or anything like that for saying it. it I just say it because it's true. And I'm still kind of in awe with this piece. I knew how big it was, so believe it or not, the uh, size was not surprising. And I, when I unboxed this, I went live on Facebook. I said, there's probably going to be a lot of that's what she said jokes in here. But I haven't even got one, and we're like four minutes in. I don't know how many minutes in we are. So that's kind of surprising, so I'll, I'll, I'll try and do better. They made 129 of these, which I think that's how many it says on the side. 128 of them, which as you can imagine is a really weird number. So I speculate that it's made to order. They're going to make as many as they had pre-orders for, for and then maybe a few extras and call it done. Let's do dimensions here. So with the seal, which we're going to talk about in a second, he's about 29 inches high. Depth from the front of the bottom lip all the way to the back of the wave is about 32 inches high. And the width, so there was height and width, some of you uh, got that joke, is about 27 and a half inches wide. And I'm going to do something I normally don't do. I'm going to do a quick transition here because I can't remember how much it costs and I need to look that up. So this is a very expensive piece, as Infinity Studios pieces seem to be, and this was $1,350. Before we dive into the concept and the paint and sculpt, I wanna give kind of some of my overall thoughts. I think there's some issues with the QC, which we're gonna jump into, but I think if you are a Jaws lover, this is the perfect Jaws piece. And it's the perfect Jaws piece because it really showcases a great white shark showing its power coming out of the water. 
as you see here, he's getting uh, uh, the seal, which we're, let's just jump into the concept and design right now. So obviously it's a shark eating a seal coming out of the water. And that sounds kind of stupid, and we want to make this uh, at least a minute long, so we'll go into a little bit more in depth. Plus that's, not just that's just not entertaining if I say that. So first he's on this black base, and there's some big QC issues that we're going to talk about when we get to paint and sculpt. And I think that was the same case with their last piece I unboxed. So I wish they would just do away with this and not even put it there. And then they use this uh, clear uh, water effect with some resin. And we're going to talk about the paint later, but I like how it's splashing out. It really kind of, you know, you can show this on the land and it still looks like it's in water. One of the other things you saw some nameplates we're going to talk about. And the shark's coming out and there's water. There's a huge water effect all over him. We'll look at in detail. His mouth is wide open, showing all of his teeth. And then he is uh, grabbing onto this seal. And in my opinion, the seal is not needed. I'm not a huge fan of this. The seal itself looks fantastic. However, it's just weird how they're doing it. I appreciate the efforts and the idea, and I'm, I'm really thankful that they actually made it optional. So uniquely enough, the peg goes right into the nostril. So here's a picture with it, and here is a picture without it. So the seal is done really well. I, don't, I just don't think it's needed. Now a few things with the concept and the design uh, specifically. I was talking to someone the other day who said specifically, cracked me up, because they also said, uh, I can't remember what else they said, but uh, first you have some nameplates up here and I don't like nameplates. I think the, they're stupid. If you don't know that this is a shark, um, then you're pretty stupid. And they actually have two nameplates. One, one, the one you saw, and we're gonna look at the uh, issues with it later. And another one that says museum, and it has the ES number on it. Completely unneeded, not a fan. The other issue I have with the design of it is looking in the mouth, the mouth looks phenomenal and we're gonna look at, at it later, but I was under the impression sharks had more rows of teeth than this. And I could be completely wrong, so someone can educate me who uh, is more into uh, fish, but I think that is a miss. And when we go into the paint and sculpt, we'll look closer at that and uh, pick apart some of it. So let's just do it now. That's what she said. See, it wasn't even a size joke. With the paint and sculpt, again, there's some things that uh, I, I see a few potential QC issues. I see some stuff that may be designed and I see some really, really good stuff. But let's dive in and look at this ugly black sub base. So first of all, it looks very plasticky and I'm just not a fan of that. Second of all, there's some damage. Looks like some glue that spilled over. So again, to me, a very poor QC process. And then same thing with the name plates here. They just look horrible. They're scratched up, they're, they're uh, stained. And technically, I think uh, Carcarius should be capitalized and it's not. I know that's a small nitpick. And then the museum here, again, look at the glue on the side of it. And the top of the letters looks like the print was bad on the Muse, M-U-S-E. There's almost other letters printed on there. No idea what they were trying to do. But let's move up to the water effect. And here I do have an issue too. First of all, I think the sculpt is great. It's really showing him jump out of the water. The water is rising up, then it's being pushed away from the shark. And I like the fact that it's partially transparent, especially on his fins, which we're gonna look at in a second. But it's very greenish. Now, if you're out in the ocean, this is probably pretty accurate, to be honest with you. A lot of people think blue, but it's more greenish. But for the conceptual design of this statue, I would have preferred the blue, uh, uh, the hint of blue instead of all this green. Now moving up, look at some of the water effect coming off the fins. This is cool, it's more transparent as it would be in real life because the reflection is what gives water its color. Water is technically transparent. So they followed that well on both fins, and again, the water splashing off of it, great sculpt. I like how you rise uh, farther up. It, it, it eliminates more of the color. And then check a look, take a look at the water coming out of his gills. And I, again, I'm not an, uh, I don't need a pesca, not pescatarian, that's someone who only eats feed. I'm not a pescologist or whatever you, a fishologist, sharkologist, but I don't know if that's correct. 
Um, I would assume it is because they breathe water in and out of their gills. And then let's look at his back. So first of all, look at all this water effect everywhere. It looks great. They really knocked it out of the park. Um, there are areas he looks completely wet and then areas that the water is beaded together. I think that's very accurate on how it would be. It's a very well done throughout the statue and you'll see it around his mouth later. You'll see it on the, his front. And then looking up, you see all these scars, uh, these scratches, which again, it would be very accurate. And the funny thing is, at first, I didn't know if these were QC issues, but the fact that there's pink underneath them, I think it's very deli deliberate and specific. So I really appreciate that aspect of it. And they're kind of randomized. And they could be QC issues, but they just look like the shark's been around for a while. And then the gray overall, I think the color is perfect. It's faded a little bit on the sides as it would be because he gets sun on the back and it looks leathery. It looks very uh, fish skin like. So I give them a lot of props for doing that. And then I want to jump to his front. So his, under, his, his belly. Again, fantastic job on the coloring here. It's this pink whitish tone and it's what you think of when you, you see shark movies. I've thankfully never seen one up close other than uh, at the zoo. And there's a lot more, I want to say, almost battle damage, which you'd call it down here, uh, where he's been cut up and hurt, permanent scars. And they have a little bit less of the water effect because most of it fell off, I assume, telling the story. But it looks good. And then I want to move up to his eyes. He has the... the uh, beady eyes. Now I think this is where it's inaccurate. I should have talked about it in concept and design, but I believe when a shark opens his mouth, his eyes roll to white. So I think that's a huge miss. You know the thing about a shark, he's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. When he comes at you, he doesn't seem to be living until he bites you. And those black eyes roll over white and then... Looking up here by his snout, again, very leathery looking skin. That pointed snout looks good. You see his nostrils. I really like how the nostril is where the seal peg goes in and you really can't tell. Kind of bunched up right below it as well. And then we move to the star of the show is his mouth. So really close to his mouth, you see a lot more of the water beating down, especially on the lower uh, jaw. And you see remnants of blood. So he's already eaten something or he's eating something kind of on the outsides of his mouth. And this is exactly what you think of when you see a great white shark. And then I'll look at his gums here. Fantastic looking gums. And again, I don't know how accurate this is, but it looks disgusting. It looks real. There's this gloss all over them and they've used a combination of whites, reds, and pinks to really make it pop. And then his teeth, so first there's the teeth jutting out and if you see they have kind of like a saw-like effect which is very accurate on each side of them. So a lot of detail into these teeth. I like the stain on them. I like the glossiness and there's a lot of texture to them if you feel it. And on the top the teeth are much wider than the ones that are on the bottom. But in the bottom they seem less organized, more jutted out. And right behind each of the teeth, both on the bottom and the top, you see the other layers ready to pop in place when a shark loses its teeth. And you continue to have that gloss effect and the red and pinks and whites, and it just looks disgustingly cool. And then here, I think there's a QC issue. I have four black spots on the roof of his mouth. I'm not a fan of that, but there is a lot of water beating around it, but you have to look at it from certain angles. And in there you almost see, I would say, the bone-like structure, but it's actually cartilage. They don't have bone and it's, it's really, really deep and that's what she said. And there I got one in. But just look at it. Almost no words can tell you how cool the inside of the mouth here looks. And it, it's disgusting. And I'm displaying it very low so uh, viewers, you know, not a lot of people come down to the man cave, but myself at least, you can actually always see deep down in there. So those are my thoughts 
And overall, uh, for the price I paid, because shipping was quite a bit as well, shipping, um, express shipping was almost half the price of the statue. I think if I'm gonna get a Jaws piece, this is the best option out there. So, very, I, didn't, I don't know if I said so a lot. With that being said, I'm very happy with it. With the price I paid, I think that Infinity Studios better step up their production quality game and they better do it quickly. There's too many missed things on a, a, a statue that's so expensive and just some opportunities because their ideas are great, some of their execution is great, I really, really hope they uh, they get on the ball before they start uh, popping out those bus. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of upset people who ha who who purchase three thousand dollar bus. So, really appreciate you guys watching. If this is your first time visiting the channel, please uh, hit subscribe, hit that bell, give me a like. It helps the trans uh, the visibility of the channel. Uh, if you didn't like it, go ahead and hit the dislike, and that helps my visibility as well. Ha <laughs> ha! But. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of sit here and absorb this piece for a while. It's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy is the best word for it. Kind of want to put my head in there. By the way, there's a huge odor from this. So you can tell it was, was painted very recently. They ship it out right away. A few companies do that. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Take care.